Hey all, how's it going? This is all one two Boku coming back to you finally from his room. And or well my room, sorry. <laughs> Gotta admit that's not weird. But I'm going to be reviewing the final movie in this quadrilogy, since I did the other three, and that is ba 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 Sorry for the lame theatrics there, but as you can see, it's Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now this movie, many of you would say probably, why do I waste my time with it? Why am I even doing it? You know, extremely sometimes weird film, or or maybe there are people of you who could who really like this movie. I can honestly tell you that, you know. I find the movie entertaining, but that's pretty much about it. It's just an entertaining movie for me, and that's all that, that it really is. I mean, this movie had a lot of hopes, had a lot of high expectations. It was supposed to come out, you know, years in advance, years later. It was, it was like, rumored that it was supposed to come out in 1999, because they had the script possibly ready, but that was one out of three scripts, and apparently George Lucas didn't like a lot of those scripts, and, you know, they were changed, and then there was, like, directing, and I guess producer issues, and whatnot, so this film had a lot of problems coming out off the ground, plus the long way, and I've learned with a lot of movies now that if you're going to make a sequel to a movie, you have to do it within a few years, because the longer you wait for a movie sequel, sometimes the worst they could be, not that it's always the case, but about, I would have to say maybe about 80% of the time, that's to me what it seems, so, I mean, this movie to me could have been a lot better. But I mean, decent cast, there's Harrison Ford back as Indiana Jones, and granted he is showing his age, I mean the guy was in his 60s doing this movie and once again it's very impressive to see a 60 year old Harrison Ford playing a character he was always meant to play and having it be just awesome right out of the page because the humor is still there, the look is practically still there and he's got you know the action part still down for as old as he is doing what looks like to be still most of his own stunts it's just very impressive for a man his age and that's the only thing that really just backs him down in this movie, really, is his age. And you have, uh, let's see, Kate Blanchett is around, is, is, is Irina Sparkle, I believe. She is a Russian going after the Crystal Skull and wants to just use it for Russian propaganda and leading Russia to a high order in the New World because they feel like they're the ones that need to take over. You know, Decent, really good villain. I still prefer Belloc out of Belloc out of all of them. And, you know, to me it was like this person was just, you know, she was good, but, you know, sort of the typical villain. Maybe a little bit of Belloc in her. And also Walter Donovan, but hey, hey. Then you have, let's see. You have, oh. Karen Allen coming back, which Karen Allen, uh, seeing Marion again was really cool, and having that type of attitude of Marion in there, and the comedy between them all, you know, really awesome to see, and really cool to see Karen Allen there again, once again, the only thing really keeping Karen Allen down is age, really, and, you know, for as many years as this film is, like a 20 year later thing, you can understand, age played a big factor, then there's Ray Winstone, who plays Mac, who is a friend of Indiana Jones, but a bit of a turncoat who works for the Russians and stabs Indy in the back, pretty Indiana Jones in the back, pretty much right in the beginning of the film. It's like a huge, like, wow shock factor. They try not to hide it, and Mac's character ends up being like an Elsa character, only male throughout this entire film. So, bit of an interesting process. Then there's, let's see... John Hurd, who plays Oxley in this film, where...
actually is a professor who's been possessed by the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, or I mean, not the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, the Crystal Skull in this movie, where, you know, he leads Indiana Jones, the Russians, and whoever else through the series of traps by providing them safely while he's in a trance, possessed by that, really. Then there's also Jim Broadbent, who's the dean of the college of, I think, uh, Bowdoin College, where Indiana Jones works, you know. He knows Indiana Jones in his life, you know. Sort of a good, friendly character, pretty much all that, uh, Jim Broadbent's character, I believe, is Charlie, forget the name, but Charlie something. His first name's Charlie, and, you know, they're, like, really good friends and whatnot, so that was the main point for him. And then there's probably my least favorite character, Shia LaBeouf. Now, I'm not the biggest Shia LaBeouf fan. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. Really do not care for him. Really do not care for the things he's done. Don't care for him in this movie at all. The fact that, you know, he's like his dad and I guess possibly has a fear of bugs maybe from what they talk about it being like, you know, Indiana Jones' dad, as we learned in this movie, Mutt is his son from Marin and... You know, that's the other thing, too. His name is Mutt. It's like, oh, or what was your dog's name, Mutt, too? Because your name is also Henry Jones Jr., and he didn't like Henry, so he chose Mutt. And just seeing Shia LaBeouf go throughout this film, you know, he has a few cool bits and a few entertaining bits, but other than that, it's like, I could have cared less for this to be appearing in the film or having his character really be there. The best thing that I love, the best diss that Mutt gets is at the end of the film when Indiana Jones' hat rolls towards the door after he and Marion get married is the fact that Indiana Jones puts on, picks up the hat and says, oh, you're not getting it, son. You know, F you. That's basically mine. You will never be me. And the fact that they've rumored that, you know, Mutt or somebody would be taken over, it's like, uh, if, if, the, if they have to continue the series of adventure movies without Indiana Jones, if they ever do do it, I don't think they ever will, but if they ever do do it, it's like, get someone, make, make Indiana Jones like an Abner Ravenwood and have him teach somebody else, but do not give it to Mutt, because, oh my god, if Shia LaBeouf took over the franchise, I would fear for the adventure movies that are based off Indiana Jones and anything else like that, yoy, like right away. And... Basically, you know, besides the characters I like and dislike, which the biggest one I disliked in this movie was Shia LaBeouf and his sort of hammy way of acting. You know, he's, I think he's a huge over-actor. There are a few movies where he's good in, but should have stayed in comedy, which there's a big, good comedy bits from this movie, but once again, staying away from that because sort of mentioned Shia LaBeouf a little bit, but this film overall... Once again, enjoyable, you know, good adventure, good actions, good Indiana Jones humor. Characterization is good. You know, not as good as I believe as the other three movies that have, that exist already. Which is why, you know, I've called this movie a good quadrilogy su saga. But mostly I still consider it a trilogy. I mean, heck, even the uh, young Indiana Jones films could be more entertaining than... Uh, Crystal Skull to me was, but that's just me saying that, so, and don't get a nod about how I'm saying Young Indiana Jones is completely better than this movie right here. But, I will say that, you know, even though it's an entertaining movie, the whole fact that these things look like aliens, and the fact that these things started all the civilization or whatever this uh, race was, I mean, it was interesting. It was interesting to see how it was, how it could have been aliens or interdimensional beings that looked like aliens as George Lucas made it in this film, which is why I will say on a quick footnote here that a lot of people blamed Steven Spielberg for how this movie turned out. I really don't blame him because this whole movie looked like it was George Lucas's idea with the interdimensional beings alien things, and George Lucas, who wrote the story, brought it to life, granted Steven Spielberg directed it, but what we saw was the basis of, I believe, the producer and the writer of this film being that it was both George Lucas. 
because Frank Deerbot and several other writers had good stuff, but he didn't want to go with it, apparently. But, either way, the biggest letdown for this film, to me, besides the entertaining action bits and comedy, is the fact that when they get the Crystal Skull into the temple room, where there's all these other alien-looking things, you know, Arana Spalko puts the head on the Crystal Skull, and then the ship starts coming to life, and, you know, it opens up a fissure through time and space, and uh, her her man and Arana Spalko get sucked up into the interdimension thing, and, you know, but at this time, you know, we don't really know that yet. It's just assumed that something weird is happening, or a ship is starting up, and we have, you know, like all these um, crystal bodies of the alien or whatnot, or the creature coming together, and it actually becomes alive, and it sort of starts to, you know, do things to her on the Spalco, and, like, show her images that she doesn't want to see anymore, and it's, like, really weird, and to me, that was the huge taboo, is that we get to see the actual creature living, you know, we see what it is really quick, I mean, it's really short, but we still see what it is, which sort of killed the mysticism of it to me, and then we see them, you know, Indiana Jones and his other pals getting out of the temple and, you know, getting to a safe place before all the other temples around them get crushed and then there's a spaceship and then poof, it's gone. And, you know, we get a question from Mutt saying, you know, what are these things? Are they aliens? And then Oxley, just out of nowhere, out of the blue, says, oh, interdimensional beings, you know, to be precise. And that's the only thing we get to saying that these creatures were interdimensional beings. We get a quote that they were from somewhere and that they did some things but we never really understood and it was like it was sort of like a quick bringing together without any explanation or quick thrown together scheme and I mean I just hated that so much because seeing what the creature looked like having actually say that quick blurb about it was just like wow this killed all the mysticism leading up to this point for the movie it just it made it dumb and you know I the fact that I we watched this for the second time through, you know, knowing how it was going to end, you watch the film and you go, wow, this the film really loses a factor of being a complete, really good Indiana Jones film, so it's sort of like, you know, <clears throat> puts it down in the gutter. Now, once again, I'm not saying it is a completely bad Indiana Jones film. Once again, great comedy throughout the film between all the characters. You know, great action pieces, great adventure moments. You know, all that you would expect from an Indiana Jones film is just that how they wrapped all this up is ridiculous. Seeing the creatures, seeing what they do, seeing them possibly go to that different dimension, you know, once again it was too far. If it was just a beam of light that went up into space, or a beam of light that was just a flash bulb and we didn't get to see what the creature looked like or anything like that, I would have been fine with that. That would have been okay, because that didn't take things too far. This one, it just took things too far, and it was too weird, and, you know, didn't know what to make of it, so I was a little disappointed by that ending, other than it being an entertaining movie. So all in all, you know, it is an entertaining movie, but it's basically all it is to me, is an entertaining piece. The other three Indiana Jones films will be great, and then this one, you know, it'll be, I mean, it's worthy to be in the quadrilogy and with the other three, but it is not a masterpiece like the other three. But hey, anyway, you guys tell me what you thought of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Whether you liked it or not, or whether you're like me, you hated things about it, and or you maybe just hated it all together. But just let me know, and I'll try to drop you guys a line hopefully as soon as I can, alright? Okay, talk to you then. Later.